This is my daily bread. Your holy word speaketh to me. And that's why we cry out. Just lift up your voice and sing. I'm desperate for you.
Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Love will now lead us to the throne of grace. Close your eyes and bow your heads. Thank you, Lord God, for everything you have done. Thank you for waking us up today, Lord God. You didn't have to, but you did. Lord God, as we're here gathered on a Zoom meeting to praise you, to give you all the honor and all the glory, we ask you to be with us through the whole service. Be with us, be with us from tough to easy, Lord God. I ask you to stay with us and protect us, guide us. Even after the service, we won't stop praising you. As I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Emmanuel is going to do the um, welcome, followed by a selection from um, Amaya. Good morning, church. Uh, on behalf of the Pastor Kanisha and the Grand Church staff, we welcome you and all who's in um, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and be blessed uh, as you enjoy this service. Amen. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Wait, um, wait. Okay. Here we go. Wait. Scrum ticket. Um. Switch this on. Okay, put this on first. Okay. Oh, don't do it. Put that on first. You're coming. Put this on first. Okay. Here we go. Switch this back on. Words of encouragement. Jesus loves us all. We are all God's children. Without God, we are nothing, and we wouldn't be here living the life we are living now. So always keep God with you. His love is forever, so continue to learn and trust in God's word. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God gives us a spirit, not a fear, but of power and love and self-control. Now I will be singing I surrender all.
give my sound to thee. Fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessings fall on me. I surrender Thank you so much, Amaya, for blessing us this morning with the beautiful voice, I surrender, hallelujah. And so at this time, I'm going to invite Ugo to do yeah. her poem. We do it today, but yeah, I will try to poem. Good morning, Cher. Um, today... I will be doing uh, um, reading a poem that I have written for today. The Lord, they say, who they say He works in mysterious ways, but when He gives us what we need on the path of life, we must give back to Him. We must use our mouth that God gave us to preach what He has given and what He will do for others. We must use our church that he has given to us to praise and show him worship and that we shall forever serve him. And we must use that knowledge to help to show the world that how us serving him will be forever our greatest feat. For God gives us 90%, we should and must at least give him the remaining 10%. Amen, amen, bless God. Thank you so much, Uga for sharing your gifts and your talent with us in um, writing poetry. God bless you. Good morning, church. I'd like to extend a special welcome to Reverend Miller, Reverend Dixon, and Reverend Ross, uh, and all of those joining with us today in our worship service. It's giving time. <clears throat> Second Corinthians for uh, chapter 8, verse 12 says, For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable, according to what one has not according to what one does not have. We just like to thank you for your faithfulness in your giving to Grant during this season. Uh, we may not be meeting physically in the church, but the life of the church still carries on. 
we'd like to remind you that uh, thank you for your faithfulness in giving towards our conference budget fund. Members are encouraged to contribute to the conference budget fund for the conference year, August 2020 to July 2021. This helps us meet our conference district and connectional obligations. The trustee board recognizes the need to maintain a building fund as part of their effort for continuous repairs and maintenance of the church property. It, like us, is getting older. We continue to ask you to give toward the church's building fund. We offer several ways in which you can give us your offerings. One is online. You can send us an e-transfer. The email to use for that is grant at gmail.com. You can give through Tithely. You can go to our website at grantame.com and click the donate button. You can give in person. There is someone there on Tuesdays and Thursdays between noon and 6 p.m. to receive your offerings. We're located at 2029 Girard Street East in Toronto. Or you can simply write us a check and drop it in the mail uh, and we will get it. We would like to thank you once again for your faithfulness. Let us now bow our heads and bless the offerings that we have received this week. Father God, you told us that to whom much is given, much is required. Lord, we thank you this day for the faithfulness of your people in supporting the work of your church. Father, we stretch out our hand now and ask you to bless what we have received this week. Increase it, Lord, and put it to use in building your kingdom here on earth. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chris. At this time, we're going to have our first scripture reading done by Ngozi. This will be followed by our second reading done by Justin. Good morning, church. My name is Ngozi, and, and today I'll be reading um, Bible scripture taken from Old one from um, one copy for this speak up. Um man so count of us as of the ministers of Christ. Thanks to God for the minister of the Jesus Moreover, it is required in the Lord that a man be found faithful. Who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generous as anything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your hand? Bless God. Thank you so much. And so this morning we have come to a very important part in our service where we'll be hearing the word of God from, uh, from the woman of God this morning. I would like to introduce to you, to some of you to um, present to you and to some of us for the first time, Reverend 
Morgan Dixon. Amen. Yesterday we were privileged, we were blessed um, to hear from Reverend Dr. Miller um, sharing with us on stewardship for those who were on, for those who viewed it um, during on Facebook or you just forgot for some reason. Well, this morning you're here to hear the word of God. And so uh, we just wanna thank her for coming. I wanna share with you a few things about Reverend Morgan Dixon this morning. Um, it is Youth Sunday and however, um, our youths are always excited to share on a Youth Sunday. They, it's their Sunday and we can't take that away from them. So we are extremely blessed to have them talented, gifted, um, loving the Lord, growing in the Lord. They are growing. And so we, we give them the opportunity to bless us on a fourth Sunday with the gifts and graces that God has given unto them. Reverend Morgan Dixon is the church administrator at DuPage Amy Church. Um, you'd have seen it in the document that we sent out to all our members. She is uh, um, presently serving as a member of the youth ministry team where they minister to over 200 plus youths of DuPage, so young people. She is a youth just like you, and you have much to learn from her. Amen. Amen. Not only is she the church administrator, but she's an itinerant elder in the Amy Church in the Chicago Annual Conference. And so, my brothers and sisters, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a woman of God who has served in many capacities in the connectional church. Not only that, but of course, she serves in our community. Um, um, one of the things that uh, we need to understand about Reverend Morgan is that she is a she consistently finds new ways to discover and to implement technology tools for deeper management. She is the eldest daughter for Reverend Dr. James Miller and Reverend Lana Miller. I cannot leave that out. We heard Reverend Dr. Miller yesterday. And so because she's from the root of that tree, then we expect that this morning we will hear a power pack message from her. And of course, her guiding scripture is Luke 12, verse 48, to whom much is given, much is required. And so this morning, it gives me great privilege to introduce to you Reverend Morgan Dixon. After the singing of the selection, the next voice you'll be hearing will be Reverend Morgan Dixon, I invite you to turn your cups up. I invite you to open your heart. Young people, I invite you to listen. I invite you to learn. One of the things I admire about young people is that they always come back to say, oh, I want to be like so-and-so. I like so-and-so. They listen as young as they are. They are very attentive. And so this morning, I know you're going to get a word from the Lord this morning. So after the singing, the next voice you'll be hearing will be that of Reverend Dixon. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. To make Jesus my choice And you know the road is rough And the going gets tough And the hills are hard to climb I started out long time ago, there is no doubt in my mind, I've decided to make Jesus my choice, oh, and you know the road is rough, and the going gets tough. And the hills are hard to climb. I started out a long time ago. 
Grant Toronto. I am excited to be with you this morning to Reverend uh, Kanisha Blake Newell, to uh, Miss Amaya and her microphone. One of uh, singing one of my favorite hymns. I've got to get one of those microphones. That is pretty awesome. I am excited about that microphone. It blessed me this morning. And I am so impressed with all of the youth of Grant. Um, good morning to everyone, all the familiar names that I see. I see Robin, we have communicated over the years, uh, certainly to Dr. Miller, to Reverend Lana, to Reverend Ross, and anybody else from the DuPage Nation who might be worshiping with us, and to all the family and friends of the Greater AME family at Grant Toronto. It's exciting to be with you this morning on this Your Stewardship Sunday, on this Your Youth Sunday, and certainly on this Pentecost Sunday. We are continuing on the Holy Ghost uh, spiritual wave that was started yesterday when uh, my father, Dr. Miller, set the tone. He loves doing these workshops. He gets so excited. He, loved, he loves preaching, yes, but he loves teaching. And so he was excited to share with you yesterday, uh, hopefully as much as you were excited to hear from him. And so we wanna continue in that vein on your theme, reimagining stewardship, grow to serve. Then I wanna add a little special thing on the end there. You are different. Before we uh, get too far in this, I want us to take a look at your scripture from the message translation. It was read so eloquently this morning, but I want us to take a look at it um, from a little more contemporary version. In your private study time, I implore you to read the entire chapter of 1 Corinthians 4. It's only 21 verses, you can read it. And it's like a conversation if you read it from the message translation. So I'm gonna share just a few of those uh, sentences today. It says, beginning at the first verse, don't imagine us leaders to be something we aren't. We are servants of Christ, not Christ masters. We are guides into God's divine secrets, not security guards posted to protect them. The requirements for a good guide are reliability and accurate knowledge. 
It matters very little to me what you think of me, and this is Paul talking here, even less where I rank in popular opinion. I don't even rank myself. Comparisons in these matters are pointless. I'm not aware of anything that would disqualify me from being a good guide for you, but that doesn't mean much. The master, meaning God, makes the judgment. And if we go down a little bit further to verse six, I all I'm doing right now, friends, is showing how these things pertain to Apollos and I so that you may learn restraint and not to rush into making judgments without knowing all the facts. It's important to look at things from God's point of view. I would rather not see you inflating or deflating reputations based mere on hearsay. Verse seven, for if you do know that for who you, who do you know that really knows you, knows your heart? And even if they did, is there anything they would discover in you that you could take credit for? Isn't everything you have and everything you are sheer gifts from God? So what's the point of all this comparing and competing? You already have all you need. You already have more access to God than you can handle. And we'll stop right there. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to come and gather to speak a word of life. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight and your sight alone. I pray that they fall upon the ears of the ones you intend, Lord, that you might receive all the glory and all the honor that is due you. I bless your name for this awesome task of delivering what you have for your people. Remove me that they might only see thee. In your name we pray, amen. Here in this letter to the church in Corinth, Paul is admonishing the people to shift their focus from judging others, namely him and other leaders, to make sure their own relationship and accountability to God is at the forefront. It's easy to see the opportunities for growth for others and miss the ones for ourselves. When we are focused outward, it keeps us from doing our own inward reflection and inventory, amen? Paul states that even being pleased with his own work is not important as it is God who has the ultimate final say. The work that he does, the sermons that he preaches, the trips that he takes, the missionary journeys, the souls he won for Christ, all matter not if God is not pleased with his actions. The mission projects we participate in, the verses we read on Sunday mornings on Youth Sundays, the choirs with which we sing, the groups and the ministries with which we participate, all matter not if God is not pleased. It looks good to others and gives us an opportunity to receive accolades, and that's important. But our relationship with God is what is most important. The judgment and opinions of others around us might prove helpful as mirrors sometimes, so we might get better, to, so we might better see ourselves. But at the end of the day, we have an accounting to God for what we have accomplished or what we haven't yet accomplished. In this season that we have collectively been experiencing, over the last 18 months, there have been numerous opportunities to imagine how we might be better stewards over that which has been entrusted to our care. God has given us many blessings and our superintending of them, our ownership of them, the way we do them, the way we work out this thing called life is our stewardship. And stewardship is not all about money. It's easy to say, oh, it's about money. Let me tune that out. But if we're really honest, stewardship is about taking care of that which God has given us. And God has given us many blessings from the oldest of us to the very, very youngest of us. It's about our faith in action. It's about being who we say we are and having those things be congruent. It's not about being one way on Sunday or being one way at church, but being that same way at home, being that same way at school, that same way at work. It's about lining our lives up with that which we profess. 
We say we are Christians and we seek to follow Jesus and do as Jesus would do, then how can we better care for the things which God has placed in our care? How can we be better stewards? How can we be better stewards? How might we better manage our bodies, our time, our attention, our focus, our careers, our families, amen, our relationships, and yes, even our money. If we come out of this season just seeking to go right back to the same mess we were in before, the wasting of time, the spending opportunity and spending countless hours worrying about things that in the end don't even really matter, then we will have missed a great opportunity and great opportunity and blessing from God. Yes, some of this time has been uncomfortable. Yes, we've not been able to move around and it's not been as we have desired, but in many ways it has stilled us enough to focus on what really matters. It has helped us to reprioritize that which holds greater value. We have been able to see more clearly where time has been wasted and time is the one thing that we don't get any more of. Where resources have been misappropriated, where we can't go back and fix those things. And I would argue that this virus has slowed things down or shifted the way we were previously moving in order to get us to pay attention differently, amen? The people who were viewed in more important pre-pandemic in some instances have had to rely on those who they might have considered less valuable. The grocery store workers, those who do the, the jobs that we don't wanna do. Those are the people that have been keeping this thing afloat. And the virus also, if nothing else, has shown us the importance and the necessity of community. We as believers in Christ have known this as we are intimately familiar with the power that can come from coming together to do more within the walls of the church. But what happens, what happens beloved when the doors of the church are closed and the smiles of the people are covered by masks and the hugs of the congregation are no more? This pandemic time has given us all a chance to take inventory of our personal relationship with God. That is, if we have seen it as such, if we've not just fussed and complained about not being able to do what we wanted to do, if we've stopped and just and, and stood still long enough to realize that this is an opportunity for growth. This is a way for us to grow. If we've had, even if nothing more, We've had the opportunity to have holy communion within our homes again, even as the early church did. For those who have taken advantage of this spiritual opportunity for growth, it has caused us to think about what is sacred and how we consider even the body and the blood of Jesus. It's not just about the wafer and some grape juice or some wine, but it's really about the symbolic representation of the body of our body savior lord jesus christ on this pentecost sunday on this birthday of the christian church i would implore us to commit to doing more and showing up with our full selves god has given us this season of respite and rejuvenation so that when we come out of things we might be different we might be changed, we might reimagine how we move and breathe and have our being in God's creation. And while we certainly pray to be able to do this in proximity physically soon, we have to make sure that we are individually better first. Our individual growth impacts others so that when I do better, when I shine, you shine. When I do better, we do better. When I achieve, we achieve. And if we've learned no other lessons from this time, it's that we are all connected. The actions of one affect the actions of many. So then, children of God, those called of God, those marked and saved by God, those who have assembled on this birthday of the Christian church, let us decide this day that we will do better 
that we might be proven faithful, not by human standards as Paul admonishes, but by God's standards. If not enough to love and care better for ourselves, but then to care for God's creation, that which we are a part, but for others, for the generations to come, for the Amayas and the Ugos to come, that there might be continue to be a church that gathers when we are long gone with the expressed purpose of being in community one with another. Lord, we want to do better. Lord, we seek your will first in every decision we make. Lord, we want to rely on you and your resources for our lives. Lord, we desire a stronger relationship with you. Lord, we desire to grow deeper in our walk with you. Lord, we will put the work that is required for us to get to know you better. Sanctify us. We will spend time studying your word. We won't put it off and do something else, but we will listen for your prompting when you touch us and prick our hearts and not just rattle off those a wish list for you like you're some kind of genie in a bottle, but God knowing that we must diligently seek after that which you would have for our lives. Lord, we will trust you. Lord, we will trust you. Even when we don't know how things will happen, we don't know how things will work out. Lord, we will trust you. Even when we have exhausted all of our human resources and understanding, Lord, we will trust you. You have preserved our lives, each and every one of us gathered here today for such a time as this. And our way of saying thank you to you, Lord, is to give you glory for our lives in everything that we do. To not choose to be mediocre in it, but to be the best of that which you have called us to do. To do everything in excellence, knowing that in our rising, in our communication with others, in our work, in our thoughts about ourselves, in our service to other people, in our service to the community of believers and even non-believers, in our interactions with you, God, we represent you. Lord, help us to seriously consider what kind of legacy and imprint we are leaving amidst your creation. Long after we have returned as spirit back to you, what will have been said about how we cared for those things which you have given us? Not the small trite things, not the things that don't even really matter, but God, the things of the spirit, the things of the heart, the things God of you sanctify us. Lord, we know that we are different. We are your church and we have been called to do things different. Help us to not keep trying to be like everybody else. It's not an easy thing. It can sometimes feel lonely, but God give us the boldness to seek after those things which bring you honor. Remind us, Lord, that we represent you and help us to honor you in everything that we do. Lord, we are asking that you reprioritize our hearts and our minds and align our desires with those things which please you and give you glory. The temporal things here on earth, Lord, are nice, but if they're not used in your service and in your service to your creation, it matters not. Help us, Lord, to understand that our actions affect more than just us. That even though we may think our little part doesn't matter, Help us to know that everything that we do gives you glory. And we are a part of a greater whole, the kingdom of God that worships here in your presence, a part of your world and your creation. Help us to care more about what concerns us concerning you, all of creation. Help us, God, to see your hand in it all and help us to trust you and not lean unto our own understanding. 
stir up within us a desire to grow to serve, knowing that when we grow, when we develop deeper in our faith, it helps the body of Christ to do the same. Help us, God, to not judge the actions of other people, because when we're doing that, we're taking the emphasis off of us and we're missing the opportunities to grow within our own lives. But God, help us to be more like you, to be proven faithful and to sanctify ourselves in you. Lord, we trust you. We trust you. We give you honor and glory on this day, on this Pentecost Sunday, on this Stewardship Sunday, on this Youth Sunday, God. And we place it all, God, each and every family that comes to grant, each and every family, God, that worships in your name across all of Christendom. And God, for the one even today who's here and doesn't know how they got here or why they're here, God, help us to be found worthy of being representatives of your calling. Help us, God, to give you glory. In your mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. There may be somebody here this morning and I'll, I'll just do a brief invitation and turn it over to the pastor who desires a deeper relationship with God, who wants to know what this whole thing is about, who's been going through the motions, who's been playing church, who's been just saying, well, God, I show up because that's all I can do. But God, help them to know right now that there's a deeper opportunity for them to grow in you a deeper chance for them to serve. The Grant family would love to wrap their arms around you and walk with you through this journey. Reverend Kenesha would love to be your pastor and love to help you to shine that you might thrive into the greatness that God has called you to. The doors of the church are open. We offer Christ to you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Reverend Morgan. Come on, begin to praise God. Begin to give God glory. Begin to give God praise this morning for a powerful word. Hallelujah. A word from the throne of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God this morning. We exalt him this morning for he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to give God praise if you're joining in or you're listening in. And you may be struggling as the preachers say. You may be wondering what's next, feeling hopeless. Come on, we want to pray with you. You can reach us. You can connect with us. You can send us a message on Facebook. You can also so send us an email, whatever form you need to contact us, we will get back to you. But this morning, we want to thank God for a powerful word, a word for each and every one of us, young people, adults, elderly, whatever age group you find yourself in this morning, a word that calls us to reimagine our stewardship, reimagine our relationship with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are different. Hallelujah. We bless your name this morning hallelujah we glorify you this morning hallelujah a fresh fire a fresh anointing hallelujah is flowing through this place hallelujah hallelujah we bless you this morning thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah as we surrender all to you this morning bless the name of jesus bless the name of jesus thank you reverend morgan so much for sharing with us this morning we are blessed. We are honored. I'm going to unmute you. So if you are saying something, I can hear. Uh, we are honored to have you. We are blessed to have you sharing with us this morning. Hallelujah. I know our young people are blessed. I know our, our, our steward board is blessed. All the various persons on this morning are blessed to have been a part of this great. As we move forward, we're moving forward. We're moving forward. We're moving forward. We're reaching for greater. We're reaching to do better. We're reaching to, to, to maximize all that God has given unto us and to bring glory to his name. 
hallelujah not our will but his will not our way but his way hallelujah give god praise this morning come on give god praise hallelujah hallelujah we are gonna do better hallelujah as we give god glory as we give god honor this morning hallelujah the word of god is indeed powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces, hallelujah. And if it has not pierced you this morning, I pray before you log off this Zoom meeting that it will pierce your heart, your mind, your soul, and your body. It will pierce and cause us to change and to rethink our stewardship and our relationship with God in this fresh fire of Pentecost. God bless you, Reverend Morgan. Thank you so much for sharing. At this time, we're going to have our announcements. And then after that, Anaya Lee will close us out in prayer. Afternoon, church. Here are your announcements. Sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry. Okay. Afternoon, church. Here are your announcements for this week. The official board, the official board meeting will be held this Saturday, May 29th at 11 a.m. on the church Zoom link. Ministry heads, please could you have your reports in by Monday, May 24th? Um, the th special thanks to those who have already sent them in. Our Youth Sunday School. Our Youth Sunday School is conducted every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Our youths continue to grow in their talent, skills, gifts, and spiritual relationship with God. All youths are invited to join in the interactive Zoom Sunday School classes with breakout rooms for the different age groups. Members are encouraged to check their emails for Sunday school materials and updates. Our prayer connection. Let us remember our day of corporate prayer and fasting which is Wednesdays between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Prayer and fasting is enriching and uplifting. It unlocks and releases God's favor and divine will for us. God commands and instructs us to pray for one another and to pray together. Our special prayer requests and concerns. We're calling each member to be in consistent and constant prayer for the body of Christ. Though we cannot fellowship as we used to, we can still commit to praying for our church and for each other. We are encouraged to check your emails for the prayer list and prayer concerns. Please join us this week for our special request for the friends and family of Grant. And these include... The Chester family, Dave, Karen, Renee, and Araya, who are still sick, Ira Richards, Latasha Archer, Louisa Samuels, Lou Roach, Angie Chisholm, Melissa DeChico and her daughter, Sister Wanda Williams, Raymond Baldwin and family, Sister Gloria Browning, Sister Lorraine Downey, Brother George Stephen and the Stephen family, the family of brother Vernon Bird, the family of brother Desmond Richard, Stacy Richards, Kathy Hunt, and sister Linda Freighter who lost her mom. We also pray for those who are sick and shut in, including Patricia Providence, Daisy Paring, David King, Carol Tibu, and mother Virginia Boyce. our prayer, our service. Please join us on the church prayer line every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. 
for our church prayer line. The dial-in number and the participant access code are displayed on your screen, and they will also be shared out in the weekly announcements email. Church Bible study. You're all invited to join our fun, engaging, and interactive Bible study time on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Time spent in Bible study is critical for all believers. This week in our Bible study, we will continue with our study series titled Prophets Faithful to God's Covenant. Membership and discipleship class. For anyone desiring to join Grand Amy Church, or to learn more about becoming an effective disciple, please join the church Zoom link every third Saturday of the month at 2 p.m. The series is titled The Journey from Membership to Discipleship. The next session will be held this coming Saturday, May 29th, and everyone is invited. Our food bank. A food bank continues to serve our community as 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 of the start of May, the operating hours have changed. Wednesdays will only be for client deliveries from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And the walk-in service for clients will now be conducted only on Fridays from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you or someone is in need, please reach out to us and we will help. No one has to go hungry. A Sons of Allen meeting. The Sons of Allen are inviting all men, old and young, as well as the youth, to join them in their bi weekly meeting to be held this Monday, May 24th at 7 30 p.m. Um, using the following Zoom link 880 9923 4084. Uh, 2021 virtual walk to end ALS. It is that time of the year again when we invite everyone to join our Unity Choir and participate in the 2021 ALS walk by donating to Team Aniola in honor of our friend and brother Aniola Osumbumi, who passed away in 2018 from ALS. Please check your email for the link or you can contact the church for more information. And thus ends our announcements for today. Thank you, Sister Patience. Okay. We'll close this out. Okay. Bow your heads and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your word today. Bless our pastor and you and, and our youth. I pray everyone. I pray everyone received a blessing to a blessing today. In Jesus' name, pr pr I pray, Amen. 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 Thank you, and Natalie. Bless God. Bless God. And so, as we're about to leave from each other's presence on this forum, just want to remind you to once again check your emails. Members, you have to keep checking your emails as we send updates and announcements. Once again, if you're not getting the emails, if you're not getting the messages, please let us know so we can add you to the list so you can be up to date as to current affairs and what's happening in the in the city, as well as the events and things that are happening at the church. Um, we are once again thank. Reverend Morgan for being with us. Reverend Dr. James Miller, I know he was on supporting his daughter. Reverend Lana Miller was on supporting her daughter. I saw Lana, but I wasn't sure if it was Lana, our member, or Lana, your mom. So, uh, so now I understand that it was Lana, the mom. So we want to thank you for sharing with us this morning. We are indeed blessed. Um, you have no idea how, how truly blessed my heart is for this wonderful weekend for Reverend Dr. Miller and for Reverend Morgan Dixon. Amen. A family um, of preachers. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And so once again, on behalf 
behalf of the members of Grant Amy Church, the officers and members of Grant Amy Church, I do say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, we don't know if we would have been able to share like this if it wasn't for COVID, but thank God there's a blessing to be had from all of it. And to all our wonderful young people who continue to amaze us, who continue to grow. Today, we're going to say the youth motto, if you can unmute yourself, let us grow, glow, and go for Christ. Unmute yourself, young people. Let us say the youth motto. Unmute yourself. Sorry, let me give you the opportunity to unmute. Go ahead and unmute yourself, young people. Um, just unmute yourself. You can go ahead and unmute. Hi, everybody. Youth. And we're going to say that the youth motto, let us grow, glow, and go mm -hmm. for Christ. Amaya, unmute yourself. After two. Unmute yourself, Amaya. Okay, after two, let's say the youth motto, let us grow, glow, and go for Christ. After two, one, two. two. Wonderful, wonderful.